Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on operating system. From this session onwards, I shall discuss few topics on file system implementations. The very first topic here is implementing files. So this topic implementing files, you can also study under one more heading called as file allocation methods. The question in the examination can be like explain the different file allocation methods. Now you are going to write the different file allocation techniques that are used here. So these techniques you are learning under the heading implementing files. So what exactly you mean by implementing files is see implementing file the word implementing is used here because normally we can classify users into two types the first type of user who are just using or creating the file and all and those users are only worried about what name to give to those file and what different operations that can be performed on the file but for the people who are implementers for them the main task is what how these particular files get stored i create a file called file one the file one is stored and saved into the disk what is the method that is allocated here in order to store this file on the disk so those things that means those methods comes under this heading called as implementing files or file allocation methods so this is what i said just the basic idea is here to keep track of which disk blocks are allocated to which files because your disk is having what so many blocks and in in that particular your disk is come your disk consists of several blocks so which blocks are used for which file so if you are allocating disk blocks for one file then what method are you using because we have four different methods here that are used for allocation the first one is called as the contiguous allocation what exactly happens in the contiguous allocation i shall explain moreover there is one illustration here before that let me tell you few things uh, this method will allocate each file as a contiguous sequence of disk blocks so this is what it is shown here in the figure so initially the disk is empty that means there are all these blocks are empty here you start storing the file file a gets created the file gets stored so it simply it is taking the first four blocks here next file b create gets created it is taking how many six blocks and file c one two three four five blocks file d one two three four five six and file e two blocks so this way one after the other in a continuous manner all the files gets stored this method is called as contiguous allocation so in this method you should also see what type of advantage you can find here and is there any disadvantage also you need to check so why we are allocating four blocks it depends on the size of the file see normally if i am taking in simpler words one block one block size let me take it as 1 kb fine and if the file size is 4 kb then what will happen you need four blocks here in in order to store this file c so that is what i have written here also if the disk block is 1 kb file size is 50 kb then you need how many 50 consecutive blocks are needed suppose if you take the disk block size as 2 kb file size as 50 kb then 25 consecutive blocks are needed so you are just storing in a consecutive manner all these files in which type of allocation method in contiguous allocation method so what are its advantages it is easier to implement the very first thing and we can calculate the address of any block also how do we calculate the address of any block because in order to calculate the address of any block we need actually only two pieces of information first thing is we should know what is the address of the starting block and how many blocks that particular file occupies if you know these two pieces of information then it is easier to calculate the address of any other block for example i'll show you here in this see this is your first block okay first disk block file a has got how many four blocks first disk block let us take the starting address 2000 it is stored at the address 2002 okay we we'll let us take each block occupies two bytes of information so the next one will take how much the starting address is 2002 so it will end here so it will start the next block will start from 2004 the next will start from 2006 the next will start from 2008 and finally see the ending block is what it is 2008 it will end at what 2010 so 2010 becomes the starting address for the file b so what ex how did you arrive at the starting address of the next file is because you know the starting address of the first block and how many blocks this file occupies let us take for example 
the file gets removed from the disk so here i am just showing one example file b is taken away fine now you can see this is vacant this is vacant this is vacant so these five blocks are vacant next file d gets removed so you can see the next six blocks are vacant here so this is one of the disadvantage in contiguous allocation method as the file gets deleted it leaves what the gaps in between so these gaps whatever gets created will remain and we will always have what a disk is having what a mix of files and gaps files and gaps one file one gap so this is one main disadvantage in contiguous allocation method and we cannot even carry out the compaction here because compaction is what bringing all the gaps together at one place and bringing all the files compaction needs more effort it will take more time also because there can be millions of blocks available on the disk so this is one of the disadvantage so we say normally when this kind of gaps gets created in the disk we say there is a fragmentation happening so i have written here the disadvantage the disk fragmentation can occur as files get removed gaps gets created on the disk the disk cannot be compacted also because significant effort is involved in moving all subsequent blocks after the gap which could amount to millions of blocks the another advantage in this method is the entire file to be read from the disk can happen only in one single operation because only one seek is needed to to the first block so this seek time hope you people are familiar it is the time taken by the read write head to move from one track to another track since all these are present in a continuous manner so only one seek is needed and that too to the first block later on automatically it will keep on reading the subsequent blocks so this is the second advantage and disadvantage as i already told you the disk fragmentation will occur here is even though in the question if the word advantages is not asked in the features that is in the description or in the working of that method you can write this advantages also then only the explanation gets completed specifically if advantages and disadvantages are mentioned then also you are going to write these things so mainly two advantages are there the first one as i said it is uh, easier to implement also and easier to calculate the address of any other block and the second and main advantage is it needs only one seek that means on one, with you, by just one single operation you can read the entire file and in disadvantages this fragmentation will occur so now let me move to the next method that is the link list allocation method so this is the method 2 let the name of the method is link list allocation method so let me show you this link list allocation method with an illustration what exactly is shown here in the diagram is there are two files file a and file b okay if you see here file a occupies how many 1 2 3 4 5 5 five blocks and file b needs 1 2 3 4 blocks now in the previous allocation method that is in the contiguous allocation method we have seen that whenever a file is removed it leaves the space that means disk fragmentation was occurring and even when we try to create a new file the the new file size may not match with the existing fragmentation that has occurred for that reason we are going for the second method we call this second method as link list allocation method so wherever are the free blocks available free disk blocks available those blocks can be used but how exactly it works this is your block okay this is the block so in whatever manner you have stored earlier same way the contents of the file get stored in this block but some part of the block is used here to store the address of the block which is next in the order for example you can see these are the physical block numbers 4 7 2 10 and 12 here block 4 is there so the the starting part of the file that is file block 0 get stored in the physical block 4 this file block 0 is also what it is storing the address of the next block where the second part of the file is stored we say that it has for file block 1 so file block 1 will point to the next block wherein it will find the contents here present in file block 2 so this way each block will point to the address of the next block and you are able to use the disk space efficiently here this is one main advantage this is what i have written also here in the explanation if you want you can refer this video for notes as well in link list allocation method the disk blocks are linked with each other the files are stored in these blocks this approach involves maintaining each file as a link list of disk blocks the first word of each block serves as a pointer to the next one while the remaining space is utilized for the data 
so as i said the advantage for this it is efficiently making use of the space no wastage at all but there can be an internal fragmentation within the last block that is quite obvious the next advantage is the directory entry will have to store only the disk address of the first block and the subsequent blocks can easily be located so one you should also know that every time whenever a file is created it is stored under one directory so this directory will also have this directory will store the information about the file that means if that particular file is there file a if this file a is having some five blocks then the disk address of each of these blocks will be stored normally in the contiguous allocation method but in linked list allocation method no need to store the disk address of all the five blocks just to store the address of the first block because the first block itself will take you to the next next so subsequent blocks can be located from there onwards this is the main advantage the disadvantage of this is what if there are 10 blocks okay occupied by a file then in order to read the 10th block the previous 9 blocks must be read 10 minus 1 that means all the 9 blocks must be read first in order to reach to the 10th block this is the disadvantage in this method so we say the random access is very slow because in order to access the nth block it has to read all the preceding n minus 1 blocks this is one disadvantage and also the disadvantage is normally when we have a block like this to store the data always the data is stored in terms of what the size of powers of 2 but since now uh, some part of the block is storing the pointer that is it is storing the address of the next block the, the data cannot have a size in terms of powers of 2 this is one disadvantage because most of the programs will read and write in blocks of sizes which are only in terms of powers of 2 so that is about the second method now let us go to the third method link list allocation method using a table in the memory so earlier is link list allocation method but this time it is what link list allocation using a table in memory this is more important here the word memory now what you are going to do is you are storing whatever addresses see this part if you see and moreover yes this zero in the last block indicates it is the end of the file similarly here here so here in the previous method that is the link list allocation method whatever space you are using here in order to store the address okay this now no need to store the address in the block instead maintain a table wherein you are storing the addresses of all these blocks so this is what is here the table is in this manner you can see see we had there two files file a was there file a was using the physical blocks 4 7 2 10 and 12 so the address of all these five blocks will be stored here in the table so this is what the file a will start from here because the very first block is what block number four when you reach this block four the content is what block seven that means it is taking you to block seven block seven if you read the content is two two will finally what two uh, block seven will take you to then from two you are going to this block then two will take you to the block number 10 and the block number 10 will take you to block number 12 so this way you are able to access randomly any block of that particular file so here in this example we have shown file b also file b starts from here you can see file b is using disk block 6 3 11 and 14 file b starts from here you can see is using the block number 6 3 11 and 14 so first it will go to 6 6 will definitely say that you have to go to block 3 so it will go to block 3 then block 3 will say that you need to go to 11 so 11 will say that you need to go to 14 and from 14 when you go back definitely you will see what minus 1 minus 1 indicates what it is the end of the file so here previously for file a this is the end of the file file for file b this is the end of the file so definitely we see an advantage here because we are able to randomly access any block but what about the disadvantage the main disadvantage is to keep the entire table in the memory at all times this main memory is very precious if you are keeping the table in the memory then what about the space that it takes in the main memory one example i have shown here let us take the disk size as 1 tb block size is 1 kb then you need to store the addresses for each of these blocks so then when you are storing the addresses for each of these blocks 
in the table the table will have 1 billion entries and also you should not forget that each entry may take some bytes like 3 bytes or 4 bytes so suppose if it is taking 4 bytes to store the entry then the table will take how much 2.4 GB of the main memory the fourth method is the inode method inode i stands here for index uh, index node then this method each file is associated with a data structure called inode so this inode will hold the attributes and disk addresses of the files block so every file is associated with an inode and what does this inode consist of one example i have shown here you can see for that file first suppose let us take for example this is some file p or q file p file p is having some eight blocks okay then the addresses of each of these blocks are stored in this inode and the starting part of the inode will have the attributes of the file attributes mainly are what the name of the file the size of the file when the file was created who is the owner of the file when was the last modification done what are the permissions given to the file so like this we have several attributes all those attributes get stored here in the initial part of the inode the next is what it stores the address of each of the blocks of that file suppose if i am taking eight blocks for file p so i'll have here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 entries so because i'm starting from 0 it will end at 7 so this way you can try to overcome the drawback of the previous method but how we are trying to solve there also we had a table which was there in the main memory so this inode is also getting stored in the main memory then what is the difference the difference is this inode will not be stored in the main memory all the time only whenever the file gets opened so that file inode will be brought into the main memory this this way you are not wasting the space in the main memory let us assume that k files get opened simultaneously then the total memory consumed by the array holding inode for the open files is k into n bytes for example if the inode occupies 16 bytes and if you have opened 10 files at a time then 16 into 10 only this much 160 160 bytes will be consumed by the array so this is just an example it can it cannot be so less the values but definitely with this method you are going to save the main memory space also so this is one advantage and what about the disadvantage do you have any disadvantage in this method suppose if the file size grows at present we decided that file p will have eight blocks only but when the contents of that file size increases definitely you need more blocks but your inode is not having the scope to add more addresses of the additional blocks so for that reason the last entry is always what it is pointing to a disk block containing additional disk addresses so all these additional addresses get stored in the disk only and from the inode the address of that uh, disk block will be included so it will point to that particular block which contains additional disk addresses so this way we are going to overcome this problem also so these are the four different file allocation methods hope you find this session helpful if you find it helpful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care